Welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Before we get started, I wanted to point you to Nancy Wilson's book, The Fruit of Her Hands, Respect and the Christian Woman. In this short book, Nancy Wilson asks us to imagine what power God would unleash through godly men who were respected in their homes. Nancy exhorts wives to stop focusing on their husband's problems and shortcomings and to look at their own responsibilities and learn the contentment which the Bible continually exhorts us to. This book on marriage for women reminds us to keep our eyes fixed on what the Bible defines as our duties and not on the modern lies which flatter us. You can get this book at canonpress.com. Welcome to the Femina Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson, and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to discuss reciprocity. And you might be thinking, hmm, that's not a word I've ever seen in the Bible, but I guarantee you the concept is in the Bible. First, let me just lay out a definition. Reciprocity is when we exchange things that correspond to one another, when we have equal privileges, equal advantages, corresponding privileges and advantages. And so what does this have to do with biblical living? I'd say actually lots. Jesus had a lot to say about this. In Luke 14, 12 through 14, this is a great prime example of our view of reciprocity, what it should be as Christian women. Then he also said to him who invited him, this is Jesus speaking, when you give a dinner or a supper, Do not ask your friends, your brothers, your relatives, nor rich neighbors, lest they also invite you back, and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So, as a culture, as a people, as the human race, you know, we often, when we invite people to dinner, for example, We're expecting a return invite. Okay, that's reciprocity. I did a good turn to you, and now you will do one for me. Or sometimes, even if we don't have the expectation, consciously, we're not really looking for that, but we might be reminded when we hear someone else was invited to the party when we weren't. And we think, well, why wasn't I invited? Because I've done, I've had them over at our house, etc. So Jesus has a totally different idea about the guest list. (laughs) Of course he does. And we should be consciously just inviting people who can invite us back. That's where the blessing lies. It's not in being invited back to their house. That's not where the blessing is. It's when they can't pay us back and we're just not looking for that sort of a return Jesus says, we're going to actually, we will be repaid. We just need to wait for the resurrection. (laughs) Then we're going to cash it out. And it will be far greater than we imagine. So this idea of reciprocity, I think, goes much deeper than just the guest list, who we have to dinner. We can think in these terms with other things as well and sort of put all kinds of unspoken expectations on people we love. Example, maybe you gave a lovely birthday gift to a friend or a relative, and then they completely forgot your birthday, or they just said, oh, happy birthday. And then you're tempted, right, to think, but I did that nice thing for you. How could you not reciprocate? I was expecting, you know, a gift that was worth an equal amount from you. And you see how that's looking for just a reward right here? It's like, why not just go buy yourself a present if you really needed one (laughs) and spend that much on yourself rather than putting this obligation, this unspoken obligation on people you love. Or let's say you took a meal to someone when they're sick, but they never sent you a thank you note, or they never acknowledged the wedding gift, or you gave them a ride, or you visited them in the hospital, or you loaned them some money, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that's 
you get the idea of what I'm talking about when I talk about reciprocity. Um, I scratched your back, so now you scratch mine. You know, just always looking for the equal advantage, the equal privilege. Like, I did this for you. Now I'm expecting to get the same thing in return. But, you know, Jesus has so much to say. If you look at Luke 6, really the whole chapter, let me read just a couple of verses, I think 35 and 36. He says, but love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and the evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your father also is merciful. So Jesus is pushing us further than just basic, you know, getting over reciprocity. He is far more merciful than we are. Isn't this true? He's kind to the evil. You know, he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. The God haters in our culture still enjoy health and prosperity and many blessings of sunshine and rain, etc. Their tomato plants grow also. <laughs> God is not stingy. He bestows mercy on even people who are in high rebellion against them. So, love your enemies. Check, right? Who are our enemies right now? Well, I can think of a few <laughs> who are enemies of our culture, enemies of the church, enemies of our town. We're to love those people. We're to treat them with courtesy and kindness. We're to do good and we're to lend to people expecting nothing in return. And whether it is the cup of sugar for your neighbor, it's like, please don't return this. Just take it. Or maybe it's something more where someone says, can I borrow a thousand bucks? And so when you loan it to them, you don't really expect to ever see it again. And if you do, you're quite surprised, like, oh, this is the added bonus. Doesn't mean on the other end that if we borrow money, we don't return it. Oh, no, no, no. When we borrow money, we should be quick to return it, quick as possible, and to be faithful with all of our commitments. We borrow the lawnmower, we return the lawnmower better than we found it. <laughs> but as for us, when we're lending to others, we don't care if we ever see it again. It's gone as far as we're concerned. That's how Jesus wants us to live. We're not to look for the reward or the payback. We're not to even really hope for it. At the same time, God is keeping an account. And all the money we lent and that was not returned is in that account in heaven waiting for us. In fact, you have a reward just growing there, and it's going to be huge. Huge. <laughs> So God wants us to be investing ourselves here on earth, and time is short, and he's storing up the reward in heaven for us. He does not reciprocate. He blesses and multiplies and expands. That's the kind of God he is. Here's another verse from Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. This is not worldly advice, ladies. <laughs> this is heavenly wisdom. This is about investing in people, giving them your time and your resources and your energy, and asking for nothing in return. Just being generous, Whatever measure you're using, God is going to measure back to you with the same generosity that he sees you using. And plus, I mean, and plus, because it's overflowing, it's pressed down, it's shaken together, it's multiplied, it's beyond. You may feel like you don't have anything extra to give, or you may feel hurt about the lack of returns from friends or family. And just here's what you have to do. Okay, let's say you poured yourself out to your mom, to your sister, to whoever it was. They didn't give it back. They didn't say thank you. They didn't reciprocate. There was nothing. So this is what you do. You feel hurt or you're just being eaten up by this thing. It's like, 
Thank God that she didn't return it. Lord, thank you. You are giving me an opportunity to do what Jesus said. Hallelujah. How wonderful. Thank you that she didn't return it. Please help me now to just love the fact that you're going to take care of it. (laughs) Thank you, Lord, that I wasn't invited to the party. Thank you that I didn't get the birthday present. Thank you that they didn't invite me to their house for dinner. Just thank him. And then turn and do good to someone else. Bestow what you have. It doesn't have to be amazing. (laughs) That freezer meal that you delivered, it doesn't have to be amazing. But the return is actually amazing. And we're going to be astounded by the return that God gives us. I would say both in this life, spiritually, and of course, in the life to come. And that reward we don't understand but we believe it. Here's from Matthew 25, 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. I hope you get this. Our stand on this idea of reciprocity, our our human stand, is not the biblical view at all. We have to reject that. Freely you have received, freely give. So we get to live like we belong to another kingdom entirely. (laughs) Because we do. We do. And so remind yourself when you are tempted to look for the exchange (laughs) that you have something so much better. And keep an eye on that bank account in heaven because that's what God is looking at. So blessings to you all today and uh, don't look for the reward here. See you next time.